Um, well, Austin, what did you say again about something about Masala? Yeah, he wanted revenge against him for uh, imprisoning him and his family. Okay, so th this kind of leads into another question. Was Masala really Judas' friend, or was he just using him? I think at the beginning of the movie, he was really his friend, but after that, he started to use him. Yeah, yeah I, think, I feel like it was grown. That kind of, when he got into power, it kind of took him over, and he was really arrogant. So. I think uh, that, that Judah also says that, too, to um, Pontius Pilate, and says it was all real Yeah, it was yeah. Rome's Rome Rome is corrupt. He says he knew this all before he was. Um, why do you think Judah refused the citizenship of Rome? Hmm. I think because they want to like stay loyal to his people, probably. When you think about how he could have had all the power that he wanted, and he really could have had all of it. Um, you know, when we watched Citizen Kane, it seemed like he was corrupted by that power and that money, but Ben Hur was not corrupted by the power that he was given, right? He remembered his people. Oh, yeah. All right, we talked about conflict. What? Why is there such conflict between the Romans and the Jews? You know, that was getting back to you know what my question was from the earlier. You know, um, like nobody really knows. They've always just been kind of less. Uh, the Romans have always been superior. Well, everybody's always seemed to be superior to the Jews. At some point. Well, I think this Rome was expanding. Glad to get some new land, and there are the Jews of that territory which Rome got. And they wanted like Rome just under one religion, and everybody had to believe in Caesar, and the Jews didn't want that, so they had to force it somehow. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think it was just Rome either. The uh, Egyptians also had a bit of a problem with them; they enslaved them. So I think it was kind of just like, well, they've done it before, so you know, let's just continue it, kind of like you know. Black people in America. It's like, I don't know. And do you think it has anything to do with the fact that maybe there are people that have been so strong or so a people of strong faith that that they're almost like a target for destruction? I mean, or if you because you have to really get in there and destroy them completely. I mean that's I think what Masala is trying to do, because if you can't destroy the leaders and the they're just going to keep coming back and coming back. So I don't know, is that why they've always been targeted so harshly? Because it's so hard to destroy them? What do you think Judah meant by the race is not over? Or Because the Romans and the Jews are going to keep on fighting. Like it, it'll never stop between them. Or could it have like a double meaning? Like the race is not over, like the race of the Romans. I just thought of that. It could it could not mean that, or it could mean that like the race is not over, like Romans will always be number one and will always be second class. Any other opinions? Uh there's a reference to how he still had one more part of the play where you could tell them that he is uh Mother and sister had leprosy. I think it has to be out of such, you know, they were supposed to be best friends, and yeah, Rome destroyed him. But thinking about that, it's your best friend, he saved your life, and you've been best friends all your kids, and then you still say something like that at the end. This is really revengeful to you. Locking in so much pain that you have to. Say it before you die. You could say it after death, right before death. Yeah, that's how I thought he was so like good. Cause remember when he made the wager? It was like he was like four to one. He did that four times better than two or anyone anyway, for that. Right? Yeah. Um. This seems to be a recurring theme on most of these. Uh, why don't Tirza and Miriam want you to know that they are done with you. Because it's 
So he has the memory of what of what they used to look like when they just didn't have like a seat, so they have a pleasant memory. Yeah, I think it's because it's insulting back then. It, I mean, you can't really pour like this today, but I almost could. Like it, it's almost the same as if you have a a mother and a sister that are now living on the streets, and they're just living in like current, like in today's standards, they're literally living on the streets, just like in their own like filth with like garbage around them. Like I don't think you go around telling people, oh yeah, that's my mom living under the bridge there, and your mom probably wouldn't want. I agree with that because the blind beggar didn't even watch And then you saw too it. What did Judah do right away when he went? He went like picked up tears of right carrier. I mean, that was like they probably knew he was going to want to touch them and hug them. And that's his death wish in their mind, too, right? So, yeah. Right. Okay, speaking of the leprosy, um, how did they get cured of Jesus. Christian wants to. And what else? What symbol? I would like to yeah, have the rain. Watch the blood. Away and down through. It was a miracle, right? That was the whole idea. Why didn't the Salah blame Judah and his mother and sister for having tiles off the rough fall on the government? Well, because he said he was against it, so. But didn't he say, like, if you're not with me, you're against me? So, like, all the other time he's in the place. It was the perfect reason to throw them in jail. Not like throwing protesters in jail because they're like blocking traffic or disrupting the peace or something like that. Yeah. You get the leaders out and then all of a sudden everything changes. What do you think will happen between Esther and Judah? You said, what do you think will happen? I had this one. Uh, this is just a small question. If Masala owns Judah and Judah owns Esther, does Masala own Esther? Yep. Yeah. Oh, if the Romans own all the Jews, then. So then would Judah have the right to free Esther when he was like, you know, as, as your wedding gift? Yeah. It sounded like he did, right? In the yeah. Yeah. He did do it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which, I suppose if Rome said no, I suppose it would be overruled that he probably had some control. Which seems really interesting in itself. I guess we can go together. Uh, What is Judah's reason for saving the counselor, and why does the counselor something like Judah? Why does the counselor adopt? That's a pretty, pretty big leap. He saves his life, yes, yeah, so he could be great, but why does he adopt him? Why did he adopt him? It's a big leap. What happened to his own son? Who's the counselor's son? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought so too. Yeah, he died somehow. So he has no son to give an heir to, right? Did he see Judah as his son then? They think you could have well been. Yeah. Like, you know, he, he, he 
sees these people in the bottom of the ships every day rowing them all along, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to lose my time. We just love his character. There was something about him. He didn't, he purposely made sure that he was the one that was left unchanged when they changed all of them. Well, and it goes back all the way to, like, well, why is it Judah, you know, the prince of the Jews in some respects, and then so powerful, and then Jesus specifically gives him the water. You know, there must have been something all along. I mean, is it fate, or is it that the master plan, or what was going on? So. How much of a role did Jesus play in the Not a very big part. He joined him fairly skipped either guy. So his part wasn't very big. How about his influence? His influence was a huge impact. This movie really couldn't happen if he didn't do the job. Well, it was called like the tale of Christ. Yep, yeah, exactly. The tale of Christ. So that's that. Um, you know, meshing together those two stories, you know, two plots kind of in, in together. How wonderful. Questions. Is there any other questions that you um, <laughs> um, well, I don't know if this is necessarily appropriate. Or not. I, I might just be asking for the argument of something. But how we talked earlier about the whole like big G versus the little G God, like do you put your faith in God or do you put your faith in a person? And not necessarily in like worshiping Caesar and Hitler, but just like in general. That could be too philosophical of a question. I think that's a very good Socratic question, actually. So you're saying, do we believe in the human and God within the person, or do we believe in the spiritual God that has power? Yeah, like, the, yeah. like, do you trust him for other things or trust him, or do you look to yourself? How does the Lord do hope for himself? Are you in charge of your own destiny? Yeah, I think it's a myth. Yeah. If you're in church and you're at your um, confirmation or your your religious leaders, what are they going to tell you? What's that for? Who is? Who's in charge? So that you're saying a little different now. And here, yeah, you're saying that you're in charge of your destiny. You are in charge of your destiny. You are. I think people do that. Like, yeah. I definitely, I mean, it's not, you don't go around being like, oh, don't take you. But, I mean, there's definitely, I believe there's a God up there. But if I wanted to right now, I could drop out of school and never come back and live on the streets. And yeah. is that God's plan for me? No. No. Maybe choice. Ooh, a choice. You brought up a valid point. Maybe that. How different are you saying that you're like you're like the Roman man? You're the Roman who says, I'm in charge of my own, I can make my own choices. And Judah's saying no. And that's the Jewish people that know there's something more than that. So well, I think you can you can make most of your own decisions. I don't think everything. But you know. I mean, I can choose to pick up this pen or drop it down, but how do you know that God hasn't already told me to do that? If that's a Christian belief, or is it an atheist respect that you can me up with this pen and down? Because we know, there, we know you guys, we're in this community where it's a very religious community, and, and people would be surprised to hear you say that you were in charge of your I think God has choices, like, uh, help and choice mm -hmm. but he you, you also gives you a good sense of how to use it, like, also. Oh, yeah, that's a good like free will. Yeah, free will. What, what's said about that in the Bible, free will? Something was, I know, it goes right back to Adam. Yeah. But it's free will for him to do that. Yeah. Like, it was sick. Exactly. So if you're living back to God, so like every person wants to do it every second. Everything. What do you, what would your ministry say? Mm -hmm. yes, uh, no, because there is a huge, this is where I think that, you know, when you guys read the newspaper sometimes and there's some pretty crazy
crazy interesting, like crazy interesting, not crazy, but crazy interesting editorials in the paper. And this, this, there's always this word about indoctrination, like students are being indoctrinated, like, like kind of brainwashed in some respects. And so this very conversation would make a lot of people very uncomfortable because they said, no, it's Christianity. Even being able to talk that you have possibly are making your own choices or the atheist stuff, that causes people a lot of discomfort. They think that's like teachers indoctrinating you and you know, well, you know, teachers are the sinners out trying to create, you know, well, you know, nuts and, and this will and so forth. That's why when you go off to college, a lot of times you guys will come home very changed individuals because all of a sudden the world is like not just firm anymore and you open up to all kinds of diverse ideas. I mean, what does the Muslim faith say about this conversation? They're going to say very much that 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 Allah does very much like God is in control, you know, and you do it all for Allah, just like people do it for God. God is in control. Oh, well, I don't know that. <laughs> that again is a part of the free will. He lets everyone do what they want to do. God is controlled when they're calling you. Well, that brings up the whole thing of the game, right? Yeah. Like, how can evil prevail in the world? That's a constant question. That's always the thing. I think it goes back, if you really think about the very first image we see in Ben Hur, it's that Sistine Chapel with, you know, like God, like, looks like he's reaching and struggling to get down to touch man. And man's hand is just kind of like, I'm not sure. You know, it's not like man's trying to reach God. It's like, kind of just like, you know. But you presented the opportunity for the